So here we have it. Intel's fastest 11 gen CPU, the 1185G7. Not only is it Intel's fastest 11 gen CPU, also the best Iris Xe graphics you're gonna get the best they have. We'll be comparing it to the M1 Mac in gaming. There's not a whole heap of games that, you know, you could test both of them on, but there are a couple, so, you know, direct comparison, so that's good. But I have to say, I'm really impressed with this 11th gen CPU. It is as fast as this in single core, so pretty much the fastest single core laptop in the world with the M1. Actually, a Nantech said it's actually faster, but in my testing, they're pretty much even in single core. Multi core, very fast too. Like it's around 6,200 in Cinebench. And this only has four cores. And to put that into perspective, this beats like laptops of not too long ago 45 watt quad core laptops. We're talking, you know, gaming laptops, XPS 15, stuff like that. This 11th gen Ultrabook CPU is faster than those. Even faster than the 8th and 9th generation, even some of the 10th generation 6 core 45 watt parts. So that is amazing. And also, so it's got better integrated graphics, better HEVC and H.264 encoding and stuff like that, decoding. There's actually a lot of good stuff in this, but let's see how it games. Right, so first cab off the rank is Fire Strike, and as you can see here, 5867. That is the graphic score, that's the important thing. It looks like they've actually changed Fire Strike here. So, yeah, this is good for integrated graphics. Let's move on to some real gaming. All right, so let's do it. Let's try the most anticipated game of the year on integrated graphics. Will they work? And by the way, this MSI Prestige 14, it's a 14 inch laptop. It's actually lighter than the MacBook Air, which is quite an achievement. Now this Cyberpunk game, you will not be able to play that on a Mac, unfortunately, but let's try it on this and see how we go here. Integrated graphics, Intel integrated graphics. It's a buggy game as it is. And a lot of people are complaining about the bugs, but they still say it's an awesome game. Let's see what happens there. Bam, bam. There you go. Whoa. Cyberpunk 2077 has flatlined. Yes. It doesn't work. I've tried it. Hopefully in the future it will work. You'll be able to play at 720p low. I know it's really demanding. So, you know, integrated graphics aren't the best solution. But it would be nice to just be able to play it. So now, see ya. I'm going to go play it on my gaming rig. All right, have a look at this. We're playing Flight Simulator. Did not ever dream that it would actually play Flight Simulator. We're playing at 40 FPS, and this is 720 low-end settings. So low-end, yeah, it's screaming its guts out here, but it's going all right. 40 FPS, that's definitely playable. I didn't even think you'd be able to play Flight Simulator. So you can play Flight Simulator. I don't know what that flashing is all about. Um, it did give me a warning saying the graphics weren't good enough, etc. But... It is what it is. I wasn't expecting it to play, so a bonus. Well, 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 have a look at this. We're playing at a solid 30 FPS, and this is a DSX Mankind divided really hard on the system. And 30 FPS, 1080p, low settings, of course. And this is one game that I can actually directly compare it to the M1 Mac over here. And yeah, i got to say, it's actually performing a bit better here. Now, I was actually sort of getting the 30 FPS sort of area with the Mac as well. You know, there's not too much difference, but the thing about the Mac was it was just up and down all the time. And that wasn't native, so, you know, I can't criticise too much. But certainly this is a smooth experience, and you can see there it can go up to, you know, 50 FPS. But it's not dropping below 30 FPS, so... It's a bit better experience than the M1 Mac here with this game. And this is 1080p low settings. I wouldn't want to go any lower than this. And, you know, if you want to get higher frame rates, you're going to have to go down to 720p. Yeah, sort of low settings. And that's the thing about these things, right? It's suck and see. One little setting can make a huge difference. And you basically just have to go through all the resolutions, etc. Now, one thing I can say, it's definitely faster than the integrated graphics on the 4800U. Right, here we go, GTA 5 Baby Wolf, and here we go with 70 frames per second. 70 frames, we'll see when it gets down to the ground, and that's pretty good. I mean, that's really good for integrated graphics, that you're able to play GTA 5. I know it's an old game, but still, GTA 5, which is a really good game, a lot of fun you're going to have on integrated graphics. A nice, solid 50, 60 FPS you're going to get, 1080p high. What more do you want on integrated graphics on GTA 5? 
All right, now here comes the ultimate test. What's going to happen? Boom. Wolf, there you go. Still stayed over 40 FPS. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I think I'm going to have to eat my words here because this thing is actually amazing. The graphics. Look at it. 1080p and it's like medium sort of settings here. Getting 47 frames per second, 49. That's pretty good for integrated graphics. And I've got to say, I did not think that you'd get this. And it's actually a lot better performance than the 1165G in the XPS 13 2 and one So just shows you when you can pump a few more watts into it, you get much better performance. And these XE graphics, they're no joke. They're really good. Okay, so we're only playing Battlefield at around 30 FPS, 1080p high settings, Wolf, yes. So if I was actually going to compare this to the Apple M1, this thing is loud compared to that. That's one thing I noticed straight away. The performance, the performance of this is amazing. It's actually hard to compare the two. You've got to remember that, you know. The M1 silicon is actually made with the metal API in mind, whereas this isn't made specifically for any API, maybe DirectX, but there's no API specifically made just for this XE graphics. So it's really hard to tell. You really need the apples apples comparison and I will test it on Fortnite, which is the closest thing we do have. And we'll see how does it compare to the M1. And remember, you can whack an eGPU on this and 4K game if you have a 3080 or something like that. So that's for real. Right, let's jump, baby, jump. Whoa, bit of a frame drop there. But anyway, this is the best apples to apples, pardon the pun, comparison we can do with the M1 Mac because Fortnite is running sort of native on the Macs because it's using metal, even though the game isn't native. Just using metal makes makes it native, basically. But anyway, we could do on the M1 Mac about 40 FPS, 38, 40 FPS at its native resolution high setting. So the native resolution is 2560 by 1600. So this thing here, I'm going to go to a different part of the map where there's not so much going on, where it's a bit more grassy and there's not so much it's not so much of a built-up area and that's because the map on the mac is actually very you know it's not up to date so it really doesn't have that much on it and as you can see here we're pushing 40 fps 1080p high so that's good so you could just reduce it a bit and you'll get your 60 fps so the m1 mac can actually do sort of 40 fps at its native res so it's actually hard to tell which one's more powerful in terms of graphics because you've got to remember as i said before apple silicon is definitely made with metal in mind they made it for metal it's optimized for metal so there's some optimizations there that obviously you know this is a you know general purpose graphics card and it's not specifically made for DirectX or whatever it's just you know there's no api especially for intel graphics so if it did have its own api and the game run on on that api um maybe it could be faster right but all i can tell you here is that sort of 40 fps the m1 mac was getting sort of at its native resolution which is higher of course that 2560 by 1600 and this is 1080p so it is lower resolution so so to wrap it up Good gaming performance on this thing. I'm very surprised at how fast it is. Remember, you can whack the eGPU on, as I said before. So I'm very surprised how fast it is compared to the 1165G7 in the XPS 13. It's quite a bit faster. Of course, it is 1185G7. So, you know, it has slightly higher clocks. But this, this Prestige here, this MSI Prestige, it can pump a lot more watts into it and you get the performance out of it, right? It's really good performance. Of course, the downside is the fan, but um, yeah, good gaming performance is faster than the, you know, the Radeon graphics that you get on the, um, you know, the AMD system 4800U. It's excellent graphics, good for gaming. You know, don't expect too much, but the fact that I could actually play, you know, Flight Simulator is pretty good. If In my books, I mean, I wasn't expecting to play that. And yeah, you can turbocharge it, as I said a million times already. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.